Hello, guys. Welcome to EGTP Presents Tech View, uh, another episode. Uh, today, actually, I want to show you guys how you can set it up NTP server. So why you need NTP server? Actually, NTP means network time protocol, right? So NTP server, you need NTP server. Like <clears throat> each and every organization, they use NTP server. So the reason you need the NTP server because um, network time protocol, that means to maintain a uh, network time within your organization, all servers, right? <clears throat> the reason is, say for example, whatever the time zone you like your organization is using, if your organization is in um, Eastern zone or uh, uh, what is called uh, Central zone or any other zone, CST, EST, whatever the zone, so based on the zone, you can set up an NTP server in, inside your organization. So all other machine, Windows or Linux, whatever, all those servers can use your server as an NTP server. So the central time protocol server. And that server may be linked with the outside. And if for some reason there is no internet or nothing, it doesn't matter for other servers because other server is following your NTP server. So now today we're gonna learn actually how you can set it up NTP server. So <clears throat> let's get started. Uh, so basically I will show you step by step how you're gonna set it up the NTP server. So for setting up the NTP server, what I did, uh, I'm going to set up a server, NTP server, Windows, Windows based NTP server. Uh, if you are trying to do this effort uh, for your home lab, what you can do, you can in, in implement on your uh, Active Directory machine. It's not going to be any issue. You can do that on your Active Directory machine. But I'm showing you on a different server. Why I'm showing you a different server? Because um, most of the time, you're not going to see any machine uh, in your organization. You're not going to see your Active Directory machine is acting as NTP server. You're not going to, because your organization have a big environment. So they can have more resource to have one, two, or three NTP server. Some of the organization have three NTP server. You can have multiple NTP server. If one NTP server fails, all of the client can resolve from Time, can resolve the time from other server, right? So every place you have to think about the redundancy. So I'm going to show you one server. If you know how to create one server, you can do multiple, right? Just say I just deployed a VM. This is just simple Windows 2019 virtual machine, nothing else. So that way you build Windows virtual machine, exactly the same thing I'm going to do here. So I just deploy, I just installed the Windows operating system in a virtual machine. Now I'm going to do the common stuff which we you should do so all right i'm just setting up a separate ntp server if you are trying to practice at your home on in your home lab you don't need to deploy a separate machine and whenever you install an operating system the first task is you have to install the bmr tools right so i'm going to mount the bmr tools and then i'm coming inside here I'm going to log in. Let me. I'm supposed to skip this option because this is actually uh, pretty easy how to you can set it up. So I'm going to quickly. I'm going to show you. I'm not supposed to show you how to set up a Windows machine, but because I showed you several time how to you can deploy a VM or, or, or Windows machine or as a Windows machine or Windows installation. What I'm going to do? Local server. Oh, so first thing is I have to go to the this one, right? File Explorer. This the yellow one is called File Explorer, right? Double click on it. It's a little bit slow. Okay, anyway, no problem. So click my uh, this computer, which is called my computer, and double click on here. It's gonna open like this, or maybe it's gonna open the instruction. If it is open like this, then click on Setup 64, and you can close now all those things you don't need actually. You are done. You are done with this. Okay. It's going to come up here eventually. It's here. See here, it's working. 
preparing for BMR tools, okay? So I'm gonna just run the BMR tools. Okay, click next, next, install. And it, it's gonna be installed. In the meantime, I need to do some other things, which is changing the time, time zone, right? So time zone, I'm going to change it to my, I know this is UTC, but uh, it's turn time, right? And okay. Okay, and so this is the common stuff you have to do for each and every Windows virtual machine. Whatever the reason you deploy the Windows virtual machine, you have to do the, all those things. And turn turn off the Windows for, uh, for Defender firewall. So first domain network, turn off, go back. Three things you have to do, domain, then private, and public, right? Go back, turn off, go back. Why I'm turning off? It shouldn't be turning off. So eventually it's gonna be turned on again whenever you add it to the domain. And domain will have a GPU policy. Through the GPU policy, there will be a file policy. And that file policy will turn on again. But for now, temporarily, I'm going to disable all those firewall. All right, so I'm done with turn off the firewall. And then I'm going to turn on remote desktop because if without remote desktop, I cannot allow this one. And make sure you turn off this one. Later on, through the GP policy, it's going to be signed, it's going to be allowed. But right now, I'm not allowing it because if you're allowing, then your domain user, a domain administrator, like if you have a user with domain administrator, it will not be able to log in to the RDP session. Why? The reason if, if this is required, this, which is called network level of In that case, you have to assign you admin user as a local administrative privilege access. So that's a different story. So that's what I'm saying. Don't uh, put allow this one right now. Okay. And then he's actually looking for restart because the tools is already installed. So after you install the BMR tools, it's required to restart, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to do it in here together, send an IP address. So I'm gonna do a lot of stuff together. And also I know what I should do, right? Turn on uh, and disable, that means turn, uncheck IPv6 and double click on IPv4 and then here. So, all right, so I have, I just changed it to three because five I had already existing another server, just so it wasn't tech. So now I change it to three and you see here DNS server, first one is four, the other one is uh, 90.4, completely different network. So that, that's what I did, and so I have internet connection now. Everything looks fine, and also, what else I need to change? Uh, turn off, so that I already done. So change the computer name. I'm not gonna do just only computer name, I also add the machine with the domain together. So NTP server 01, okay, I'm going to copy it. And also I'm going to, you know how to how to add, right? Just put it here, domain name, ELS.com. But in the beginning here, uh, there's two ways. You can do it like this way or another way. Also another way is, uh, okay. This is the domain, right? Or if you can open a uh, activity users and computers, Okay, activity is not So by default, it's gonna become here, but I'm, I'm gonna put it everything on my customized one. Do I have any customized one? I don't have any, right? I have a DNS server, I don't have any. So, okay, I'm just going to create here right now, but later on, I'll, I'll create a new one and it's gonna, I'll put it there. So new computer. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I've already added. So on, on the ActiveDP server, I just added manually, right? It's not gonna show me here the DNS name, but after I add with the domain, it's gonna show you. So, okay, just click okay. 
Okay, so I need to verify. So A D M I N I S T R A T Y administrator at ELS dot com. Or if you have an administrative account which has administrative privilege access as a domain admin, so you can assign that user also. But I don't have any credit because it's my brand new domain controller. So I'll create it later on. If I have a uh, user ID or user um, as an administrator, like my, on my name, say for example, site at els.com or ADM site, like administrative site, or you can say uh, SSI, system admin site, whatever, it's, it doesn't matter. But the matter is that user is supposed to have an administrative privilege access. That's it. All right. And it's gonna, it's, it's done, right? All right. Sometimes it says, the reason it shows here because I supposed to do the re reboot and then I should come back and then I should change the computer and then reboot it and come back and then, and I did like, I skipped two reboot, so that's why it's showing like this. It's okay. Just close it and restart now. So that's it. Now the machine is re rebooting. And on the here, if you look at here within short time, in here you're gonna see see here, it is all automatically created. And also it's created the DNS entry automatically. Where if you come back here, let's see. If you go to the okay, go to the ELS. Uh, it should come here automatically. I'm just going to give you a refresh. Uh, NTP, 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 NTP. So in here, now I can use as an ELS administrator. See here, now it's ELS administrator. M I N I S T R T U R administrator. But, but whenever you type administrator and it shows here, the server name that means the local administrator. But if you use ELS in that case, it is slash backslash. Now it's changed to ELS, see? And then now I'm going to log in as a domain administrator. Okay, all right. So I just prepared this machine, this server, for NTP server, right? So I now I need to make this server the NTP server. So there's a several way you can make the server as NTP server, or you can or you can also you can uh, make link with external server. So to the internet, if you, this server has internal connections, it can update the time and and it can distribute the update the NTP time and it can distribute to the client because all the clients should be uh, centrally managed to this NTP server, right? Because all the clients are gonna be used that machine as an NTP server. So how the mich all the clients should be used. So there is a lot, lot of other systems and in the from the VMware side, there is the options you can choose like for example, uh, even any AB virtual machine I show you guys, whenever you created a virtual machine or after your creation, you can go VM options and go to the VM tools. And there's options called time, synchronize guest time with the host. You can you can check mark on this. That's where you can also get the latest time. But there is a way, standard way you should do, which is through the GPU policy. So we I'm gonna show you guys through the GP policy, how we can manage all your client, how all your client can get the NTP time from the server and how the server serve the time to the client. So everything gonna be happened through the GPU policy and how you can set up the NTP server, like this server, this one, the one we are now going to set up. So you can do it with locally or get the update from the internet. And also you can do it with the GP uh, group policy, no, sorry, not group policy, is a regi edit, registry setting. But I'm not doing through this, I'm gonna show you some script. Actually not a script, it's just uh, some uh, command, CMD command. So through the CMD command, you can change the registry settings 
that's pretty easy, pretty normal, pretty easy. So what I need, I'm going to log in here. Duplicate, okay. This server, I'm going to name it this, right? And here you can change the IP number three. I assigned the IP number three, right? So now I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to log in as a domain administrator here. See, boom, done. All right. So what I can do here, what I can do here, I need to set it up. This machine is an NTP server. So the PowerShell is fine. Also the PowerShell you can work. Okay, so I have a script here. You see here NTP server setup. So I'm, I'm gonna start from here. Near the stop, on each and every server has a this one. Net stop. So I just on the C drive I net stop on thirty two uh, W thirty two time in this time. So each and every Windows server has this option. I just stop the service, right? Now what I should do? I should run this command up to here. So I, I, I'll I share this command um, on the description box. So you'll have it, the copy. So the copy the whole thing and go back here, I click on it. Okay, the command completes successfully. Okay, this command is successfully executed, right? Now, this command, say yes, okay? Copy, and I'm going back here, and then, yes, this command also successfully, right? And come back here, it's pretty simple, but if you do, if I show you with the uh, registry settings, you will be confused. And I saw that there is a lot of YouTube videos and maximum people they are showing through the registry settings. But anyway, it's doing the same thing, right? So we set it up. Now we just uh, start the NTP service, um, Windows 32 time service. We just started. And now we need to check configuration, actually what time is getting, right? I'm going to just check in the configuration. So it's showing everything, even logs, time, local, 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 local. Let's see here. So it's getting this NTP server or the ORG. Okay. All the time, all the configuration is showing here. Now I want to check it to actual status. Okay. This is the last command. This is the last command. Actually, make it bold because all other one is bold. Copy. And come back here. Oh, no, 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 no. This is wrong, completely wrong. Okay. So actually, I'm going to put it on top. So what I need to do, I need to copy this one, right? Copy this one, and this is here, and then status. So the status it shows last successful sync time. 3, 9, 23, 128, 29, okay. It's taking the time from there. Okay. So everything shows correctly, right? So this is the actual settings. Now, this machine is a NTP server. Now this machine is a NTP server. But now the question is, how your client knows this is NTP server. How your server knows. So you need to demo. So you can uh, apply the GPU policy, just one GPU policy for the client. This is the server, server is already built. This is the server, so you can do it on your local, your Active Directory machine, or you can do it on your uh, completely separate machine. So it's usually enterprise level, everybody do in a separate machine. That's why I'm showing you in a separate machine. All right, so what my job right now, so I have to create a GPU policy, right? So, 
And also, if you can look at here, I have a computer object, app three server here. Actually, by default, all the computers, whenever you add, uh, if whenever you join any client server, any machine, it's gonna create a computer object by default inside this computer, computer OU. So this is a default OU, but I have created, uh, uh, like those are, those are uh, computer objects. This is the, um, uh, what is called, uh, manually created by me, which is I created this object, uh, this uh, uh, OU. And also I have an, another OU called DNS server for my, uh, if I have a multiple server, if you have a multiple server, you can have put this OU. It's up to you, or you can put everything together in here. It, it, it's, it, it's not gonna have any issues, but I want to organize my environment. That's why I have different, different OU and different, all the domain control should be here. And the NTP server, the one I built today, and I put it here just to make it organized, okay? Um, so what I need to do, I need to create a GPU policy, right? So how I can create a GPU policy? I need to go here um, and go to the, actually I already created one here, but I'm going to show you actually how, you, how you're gonna create. So actually you're supposed to create under the group policy object. Uh, you need, you don't need this one. I'm going to delete this one. Okay. So you need only one NTP client, right? Uh, so how are you going to create it? On the group policy management, right click on it, then click new. And you can say NTP time server on the time, this time client or something or whatever, whatever you want, right? You just can, you can create it like this. Right, I have already one, right? So you, you can click like this, just what you did, group policy object, right click and new, and that's it provided name, that's it, right? After you created it, you just need to edit it. And how, what are you gonna do, edit? You have to go to the policy and then administrative and then system and ex just expand it a little bit and then go all the way down in those time services, time provider, and it's gonna be show you on the right side. And from here, you're gonna see, you need to configure this too. So that, that client, you need to first client enable, okay. It's gonna be enabled for client, apply, okay. But what should be this NTP server name? You have to enable it. And in here, you see here, time.windows.com is a default one. So we know what the server IP, right? So the server I set it up as an NTP server 01, this IP is 192.168.1. Three, and in here, this is the default value. So how you know you are exactly using your NTP server. So that's why I'm going to remove the default one and I'm going to put it eight. All right. So this is the flag. So I changed the flag to eight. It was nine before it's by default. And also you need to type, I've changed the uh, type which is NTP, right? And the time, so just for showing you how it's changed the time. This is basically the seconds interval. Uh, so I'm going to change it to 120, that means uh, seconds every two minutes. And apply, nothing else, right? And apply and okay, that's it. That's it, right? So you, are, you should do two things, here enable, and this one, you should do this, right? And then close it and refresh it. So if you go here, settings, and close it, and you wanna see here, all the settings here, whatever you did, it's, it's showing here. And my NTP server is three, IP number three. How I know? If you say IP config, just IP config, you see, the IP number is three, right? So this is my NTP server, right? All right, so I have created this, okay. So I have the same setup here, NTP client, that's why I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to show you how you're gonna do that. So right click on it. So what of the OU you want? Based on this, so you see here, I have a uh, computer object here. I have a computer object here. So whatever the computer object I need, I, I'm gonna uh, link with all. So what are you gonna do? Do uh, on the GPU policy objects from the group policy, select the OU where you wants to apply for the client, right click on it. You can say link and existing GPU. 
And first step, XGP, this is the XGP, right? You can link this one, right? And then the end of server here, right click on it and link GPU, you can select here like, like this, right? This is the way you can just do it, right? Actually, I have already, and that's why I'm just going to delete. Delete it, I'm going to delete it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to delete it. I don't need it. I, I know I don't need it actually. Because I have this one exactly same settings I have here. If you look at here, this settings, you see uh exactly the same settings I have here. On the 20, right? So just for showing you guys, I just created this one. So I'm going to delete actually, because I have already, and I'm going to delete it. And the one extra thing I did here, what I did, when I link it with the different different OU, I just make it enforce. I'm enforcing. You have like, I'm enforcing to the OU that all of the servers inside this, this OU needs to be um, assigned this GPU policy. So you're enforcing. All right, so this is the way you can link. Now, what do you should do? So from each and every machine, you need to go to the CMD command, to go to the CMD, go to the CMD, run CMD, and each and every one. Just go here, you can so GP update force. You can type GP update slash force. So it's gonna be update, or you can reboot the server. That's pretty easy. Otherwise, GPU will be make effect after two hours. So if you want to get immediate action, either you can run GP update force or you can run, um, you can actually reboot. So sometimes because this is a, um, because uh, this GPU uh, will change, this GPU will change the registry. So in that case, sometimes it, without reboot, it doesn't work. Uh, GP update search for it doesn't work. But anyway, you can check it like this. So, and then how are you going to confirm? How are you going to confirm actually this one is getting time from the server? So, how are you going to test it? If you run this command, copy. Okay, so now I'm going to check each, each and every one of my, you can enter what it shows. Sorry, not this one. Okay, configuration. What kind of configuration is getting? If you hit enter, you're gonna see NTP server. You see here, this is my client. And, and my NTP server is, now I'm, I'm checking the configuration, NTP configuration from my client. And the client is getting from where? Three. Did I change here? No, I didn't. I just applied the GPU and I just ran the GPU update. So same thing I'm gonna do for each and every one, right? So this is my sand machine. I said, okay, GP update slash force, hit enter. And which command this? I want to check if in this machine what the configuration. So copy and same thing I'm going to run here. You see here? Exactly the same thing. Type is NTP and other 20. So it's it's it's, it's coming from the GPU, right? You understand, right? I change the time to 120, right? Right. So same thing here. This one I already changed. So you see here, already on the GP update, this machine. So each and every one is getting the same thing, right? Okay, this one is actually copy. So only one thing is different, which, okay, sorry. This is my, the, right now I'm, in, I'm inside of my NTP server. This one will change a different different thing. 
what is going to show you as the NTP server is showing you different things. Because in this server, we set up this link because this server is the NTP server and it's going to be collect the time outside, right? And it's going to be served to the client. So all the client is actually getting this IP, the <clears throat> NTP server IP. So this is how actually you gonna get the time. So that's called the NTP time server setup, okay? So now we prove all of our server is getting the IP address, sorry, not IP address, like the time, current time from time server. So you can have multiple time server. If, if you run an organization, you should have multiple time server because if one time server is goes down, then how your client is going to be resolved time from the other server, right? All right, so now we know this is our time server, right? NTP time server. And now I'm going to show you another thing. In the Linux machine, you can provide that same NTP server IP address or uh, SQDN, and also our all the ESXA host. You see here ESXA host is disabled stop. You know, what you should do? Go to the edit option. You can see, see the network protocol time server, and you should provide the IP address 192.168. Dot one dot three, right? And start and stop NTP service, start and stop with the with host and hit OK. And see, now it, it should stop, right? But you have to start the services. Which service? Okay, it's running. Now it's running. 256, two, you see here, 256, exactly the same time. So we should do for all, all of them, we should set it up like this. NTP server, 192.168.1.3, and NTP start and stop with the host and okay. So this one, same thing we should do like this, is NTP server 192.168.1.3, so previously we didn't set up this one because um, the reason is we we we, we never have a NTP server, right? That's why. Now we have it, so we can do it, right? Okay, it's running, it's running. It's here, it's running. So we have server here, everything we, have, we need to change. But the other problem is if your server doesn't have the current date and time, what's gonna be happen? All right, so uh, this one, what's, what's the problem? What, what, what kind of problem are you gonna face like if you don't have the NTP server? So anyway, so when you add any machine with the vCenter and if the machine doesn't have the up-to-date time, in that case, you will have a problem. Because when you try to add the machine with the with inside the B center, yeah, every all the information is correct, but you're not going to be able to join it. So NTP, or thought, NTP, that means um, network time protocol is very very important in server environment. And also the user authentication, Kerberos, it depends on the NTP time. So if the Active Directory and the client machine doesn't have the same kind of NTP sync. In that case, most of sometimes you'll have issues. Like, say, for example, a user complain he has the password is correct, username is correct, but he wasn't able to join because of the maybe NTP time issues. So yeah, <clears throat> NTP is very very important. So that's all. Uh, actually, I need to I need I need to have time to complete all those. So this is the way you can set up the. NTP. And thank you. Thanks for watching. And <clears throat> if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also don't forget to share with your friends and uh, your colleague.
or your coworker. And if you think my video is helping you, uh, please um, give a big thumbs up. And also don't forget to click the bell icon because uh, if you don't click the bell icon, you'll not get the my next video uh, notification. So thank you. Thanks again uh, to stay with me and watching uh, this video.